It's Monday here in the North Shore Drive podcast. We talk Steelers after Ray Fittipato. He's back from Mobile. Now I want to get his final thoughts on how the Senior Bowl went and other players that we maybe didn't get to talk about as much who are standing out to him. Also, with Eric Bieniemy entering into the OC search conversation for other teams, did the Steelers rush too fast to get Arthur Smith? We'll talk about that. And who should the Steelers be looking at quarterback-wise to add to add to their room? They gotta they gotta see if they can bring back Mason Rudolph, but also there's quarterbacks in the draft and in free agency. All that here and more on the North Shore Drive podcast from Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Let's get into it. You are now listening to the North Shore Drive podcast, a show on all things Pittsburgh sports from the writers of the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, hosted by Christopher Carter. Hello, welcome to the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Ray Fittipato. You can read all our written, written work at post-gazette.com. Find us here on your favorite podcasting channel or our podcasting app and on YouTube. Like this if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this channel to get all of the daily content that comes out from our Post-Gazette writers, including the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday episodes of the North Shore Drive podcast. As always, the show is brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. Go to Mike's Beer Bar today for one of 500 different available beers. 300 of those beers are, are from the local area. 80 of those <laughs> local beers are available on tap and they're always switching new ones in and out for new options more on them later ray's back from mobile we talked to ray we talked to you ray going into the the, the end of the week uh at thursday but now the senior bowl has been played all the notes have been made and now the next big step for a lot of people in the draft process is going to be the combine and then pro days but now that you've kind of had the time to step back and see how things played out uh in in mobile and with the senior bowl who are some of the standouts you think the steel the Steelers be, should be taking notes of and important positions of need? Yeah, I, I I think you nailed it right there. It's more so the the positions of need being down there for a week. It was confirmed that this is a really strong offensive line class. It's a really good receiver class when you look at it. And Chris, it, you know, even the 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 top four to five receivers weren't even in Mobile because they're underclassmen, but. Above and beyond that, late first round guys, second round guys, third round guys, it was really impressive uh, to watch some of the receivers down there. And I thought the corners were really good um, there too. Uh, kind of the same situation as receiver, I would say probably the top, maybe Mitchell's probably in that top group, but uh, I would say other than Mitchell, maybe the, the other four or five top guys were not there. But again, deep class, you know, second round guys, third round guys, that teams can take a look at um, on day two. So, yeah, I, I was really impressed. I, I think, obviously, the offensive tackles. Tyler Guyton is really impressive athletically. Um, and I know we talked about him last week, but center-wise, Jackson Powers Johnson, once again, just really impressive down there. The talk down in Mobile that he was the best offensive player down there, period. Not best offensive lineman, hmm. offensive player. So, um, you know, the Steelers have a need there at center. They might have a need to tackle and uh, obviously receiver and corner too. So um, good week for them down there. Um, it's going to depend on how the board falls, of course, and what they do in free agency. But, uh, I, you know, I, I think going into the week, uh, what I thought about this class was confirmed. It's very good at all the positions the Steelers need. Yeah, I, certainly. With the way that things are shaping out, I mean, people talk about how, how deep of a tackle class this is. And now with the with the play of, of Jackson Powers Johnson, I mean, he looks good in college, but a lot of people are like, yeah, center is still not an important enough position to draft in the first. But the way he looked, like you said, the best offensive player, maybe best overall player at the Senior Bowl, maybe he has played his way into a, in being a first round guy. Do you think that it's? I mean, you can never say anything's a lock in the NFL draft because too many crazy things have happened. But would you say this is like eighty to ninety even percent uh, chance that the Steelers are basically just going to go the best offensive lineman they can get in the first round if they stay at twenty? Um, you know, eighty to ninety percent that might be a little high, Chris, just okay. because they do need a defense defensive lineman. They do. And what if a highly graded defensive lineman falls into their lap, mm. or what if a highly graded corner? Um, falls into their lap. So, points. you know, I, I would say right now, I, you know, 50% maybe that they go the direction of an offensive lineman. Um, you mentioned that centers just don't get drafted in the first round. I was doing some, some research on this. And in the past 20 years, so since 2003, only 13 centers have been selected in the first round. 
Wow. The average draft slot for those centers was slightly more than 22. Mm. Okay. So when centers are coming off the board, they tend to come off the board later in the first round, pretty much 18 or after, um, to be honest with you. So 18 to like 31 is where you see the centers come off the board when they do go. Um, you know, most of the time it's in the second round. So again, there are always exceptions to the case, you know, Marquise Pouncey, obviously a ton of value in that pick, right? I mean, mm-hmm. nine Pro Bowls, 10-year career. Um, even recently, you know, Tyler Linderbaum, I think, is a solid pick. I don't think um, – he hasn't been voted all pro yet, has he? I think he maybe made a Pro Bowl, but um, he's solid. And, uh, he's solid, you know, yeah. I, I think if you go down the list, Garrett Bradbury, um, Cesar Ruiz, some of the guys drafted in recent years, they're, they're solid. Maybe not stars, but – um, they're solid. So the Steelers have to make that determination. Do they have a grade on Jackson Powers Johnson where he's legitimately a number 20 overall pick? Or do they have to put a value on him and say, here, he he might be 30 or 35 on our board. Maybe we trade back. Or, you know, maybe they just take somebody else because they don't have that type of a value on him. So it's, 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 it's tough to gauge which direction they're going to go right now. But, uh, yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. I think 80 to 90% is – maybe a little bit high, but I still think there's a good chance that O-line is the first pick, whether it's center or tech. So a lot of people are probably wondering, well, if it's if it's 18 to 21 or 18 is, is like the range where you start looking at centers coming off the board, who are those teams? Well, the teams ahead of the Steelers, you got 17, the Jaguars, 18, the Bengals, 19, the Rams. Uh, I, I don't think that the the Bengals necessarily need a, need a center. I think that their bigger need is offensive tackle because they missed really bad on on a, on, on Jonah Williams. Um, so you, I think that you could take them out, out of the equation. Um, I, I think the the Jaguars in a similar position. They more so need offensive tackle. But they also need corners. They need they need a lot of different things. And you know they they, they have other answers to to get there. Um, the Rams that could be an interesting one because you know they're in a they're in a different position. But I think they're also probably looking more on the edge corner offensive tackle route. So it, it seems like it, it's it's likely that Jackson Powers Johnson would be there at twenty. And considering you know over recent years, you know the Steelers they passed on Tyler Linderbaum for Kenny Pickett. Um, they passed on Creed Humphrey for Pat Fryermuth. Uh, you know, they've they've missed on guys who have become very good to great uh centers in the NFL right now for other teams. It just it seems to me like Jackson Powers Johnson is more so solidifying himself with the pick. I think all he has to do is really finish with a strong combine and a strong and you know, if he does his pro day at Oregon, at, you know, I'm sure the Steelers will be in attendance uh yeah. in some some form or fashion. That that might put himself in a tough situation, but the question is, like you said, if a top corner like like Terry on Arnold or Kool Aid McKinstry from Alabama, if one of them falls there, or if one of the top offensive tackles, or like you said, a defensive lineman, Jazan Newton out of Illinois, he's kind of the top guy. Um, right. If one of those, it's going to be interesting to see if this how the Steelers weigh center versus those positions, especially because I think center is maybe the biggest need of those positions. Yeah, I you know I don't think Creed Humphrey was the first tackle. He, off the board his year. He he, he uh, was like the 14th offensive lineman, at least the third center. Okay, and he was what, like number 60 overall? Yeah. Last year, Joe Tipman was the first center off the board at number 41. So, wow. you know, it, it's it, – when you look at it, Chris, do you wait until the second round? If you wait until the second round, then you're probably not going to get them because the good centers come off the board mm-hmm. early in the second round because that's where teams see value in centers. Um, and the, but then you look at it the other way, you don't want to draft for need. You don't want to look at it and say, no. hey, we need a center. We're going to pass up this tackle we have a better grade on. We're going to pass up this corner we have a better grade on. You just don't do that. So, right. um, hey, listen, they might address center in free agency. We, we don't know that. Um, they might do something else. Maybe they stick with Mason Cole. Um, maybe they think Nate Herbig can do it for a year. Maybe they move James Daniels back for a year. I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities that go into this, but the center aspect of this discussion is just very interest, interesting based on where the Steelers draft and where the centers typically come off the board. So I think you're right. I think he's probably going to be there at 20, but the question is, is there going to be value for the Steelers there when they're ready to make that pick? 
I agree. That's going to be a big question in how and how they build the the you know the, their free their roster moving forward, especially with how this draft could work out. But we also got to talk about how they how they how they built their their uh, their coaching staff. Arthur Smith is the hire, but now Eric Bieniemy is now is now out there and available, which wasn't a hundred percent certain if that would be the case uh, for for the NFL because Washington could have kept him. But we'll talk about that. Your thoughts, more thoughts on Arthur Smith as well as maybe some other additions that could be coming to the coaching staff if they were to make them. We'll talk about all that here on the next segment of the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato, stick with us. But first, I want to remind you this show is brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar. When you're at Mike's Beer Bar, you're at the best bar in Pittsburgh. It's right on on on, uh, on Federal Street, right across the street from PNC Park in the North Shore. You go to Mike's Beer Bar. Over 20 televisions they have, so you can enjoy your favorite sporting sporting game. Get to go there. Book out a table. You can even reserve a table with a TV specified to the game that you want to watch, whether it's NBA, NHL, college basketball, whatever right now. You can also go there for the Super Bowl. And when you're there, you're trying one of their 500 different available beers. 300 of those beers are from the local area. 80 of those local beers available on tap. And they're all different types and kinds out there. So if you're thinking, oh, it's just 80 of the same stuff, trust me. They go from IPAs to sours to stouts to anything you could imagine. Mike's Beer Bar has available. Go right now to try try a flight with every option out there. Trust me, you'll never run out of options because I never do. They also have steak on a stone and awesome meals for you while you're there. Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar all of Pittsburgh. When you get there, tell them Chris sent you. Back here in the North Shore Drive podcast on the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato. We're switching from the draft and you know, Senior Bowl to talking about the uh, the OC search. Now the Steelers have found their OC. It's official. They announced it um, uh, with our, with Arthur Smith, and we've talked a little bit of, about that. Um, but now Eric Bieniemy is going to be in, in the conversation, which we weren't sure if he was because Washington could have kept him if they really wanted to, but now he's he's out there and he's looking. Um, and people are starting to wonder: Did the Steelers jump the gun with getting Arthur Smith uh, when Eric Bieniemy? He's been a big name in the offensive coordinator market for quite some time. For those who might not remember, he of course he was the coordinator for the Chiefs when Patrick Mahomes rose up uh, and won his first Super Bowl with them. Uh, he switched to the and first two Super Bowls, and now he switched to the Commanders this year. The Commanders didn't look great on offense, but there were times that he made Sam Howell look kind of decent I, I i think do you think the steelers jumped the gun here or do you think that more so they did their process and they came out with the guy that they really wanted yeah i mean the impression i get chris is they just really liked arthur smith and they didn't want to let the best candidate out of the building after um after he interviewed so they did have a long list um deeper than arthur smith but i think once arthur smith got in there and they talked and they realized it was a good fit then what's the point of going on? I, I think they wanted Arthur, and Arthur obviously uh, wanted to be here. So, um, you know, the, the enemy thing would be interesting um, to me, but it's not like he's landing other jobs here. I mean, people are going on. I mean, looks like the Raiders are, are hiring yeah. Luke Getze. And, um, you know, so there's always that question out there about the enemy, about why he doesn't land different jobs. I, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't interview well. I don't know the answer to that, but – I don't think it's any reflection on the Steelers, to be honest with you. I just think they got their guy in Arthur Smith, and they went ahead and got the deal done. I I, I get you on that, and that's that's part that's part of the thing here is that the Steelers they kind of know what they want, and who knows? Maybe like you said, maybe the enemy's not interviewing well. Maybe he's just not the type of off offensive coordinator they want. I, right. I think one thing that happens with some of the conversations people don't people just hear what they hear here's things out there that somebody says about a certain person and they hear arthur smith and they think the falcons and they think people talk about them and i, I think that sometimes we can get a little ahead of ourselves when because i've seen people say he, he he doesn't call a modern offense and I, I think that people when people think modern offense they think flashy they think quick passing they think west coast offense but not all offenses run that way. Like the Niners right now, Kyle Shanahan, sure they have that kind of, they have some of that passing in there, but they're very much a team that relies on the run. Like they, right. you know, they their offensive line dominates the line of scrimmage. Christian McCaffrey is, you know, in the MVP conversation for a reason. Um, you look at the Eagles, they're best when they're running the football. You look at the Ravens, they're best when they're running the football. Um, you know, unless you have, you know, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. Like if you have Josh Allen, it's been rough. They, they, you know, they can't even get to the AFC Championship game. But unless you have like Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, one of those types of guys, this is kind of the offense that you want to run in today's NFL to have a chance. I mean, people say modern offense. I mean, in 
2020, only three years ago, they were top five in scoring and top five in total yards down in Tennessee. They were the number one seed in the conference. Uh, the year before, his first year as offensive coordinator, um, you know, hit the ground running, top 10 offense, scoring, and total yards. So, um, I mean, to me, that gives me hope. Hey, first year with the Steelers, he knows what it looks like. He can go in there. He, he knows how to game plan. He knows how to scheme. And there shouldn't be any excuses this year. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, we're not going to get a chance to talk to to Smith for a while, I think. But, you know, I, I think his philosophy meshes extremely well with the philosophy that's already in place in that building. And it's a philosophy that's not going to change. It's been that way for the Steelers for 50 years or more. Um, it's been that way <laughs> since Mike Tallman came. And it's only been reinforced with Andy Weidel in the way that he wants to build through the trenches and and, and be a team that uh, can play physical football. So to me, perfect fit for the Steelers. I understand the whole, you know, people getting um, enamored of people in the McVay and uh, uh, Shanahan coaching tree, even the Andy Reid coaching tree. But to me, when you find philosophies that mesh, um, you know, I, I think that's a good thing. And I think that's where the Steelers are right now. Do you foresee the Steelers making another addition to their coaching staff right now? I know Mike Sullivan took a few interviews at OC, and there's there's a chance that he, he could leave. But do you see, even if they don't necessarily get rid of anybody at, at, at their at their um at your on their on their staff right now, do you see them adding a position, maybe like a pass game coordinator? Because some people are wondering if that's what's needed to continue, you know, trying to yeah. get something better out of the quarterback room. Yeah, I think you're going to want to have Arthur Smith bring in one or two of his guys. I mean. I mean, shoot, they afforded Matt Canada that opportunity. I mean, why wouldn't you do that for the new guy, right? I mean, I, you know, and I, I think just, you know, we don't know what's transpired on the south side. Um, maybe contracts haven't been renewed and maybe coaches are quietly trying to land new jobs. Um, you know, they're, they're not going to announce that a coach isn't back if his contract expired. So right, they, they may be in the process of filling out the staff right now. I think just, you know, um, they want to get it done before the combine. The combine is a few weeks away. Um, so as long as they get it taken care of first two, three weeks of February, I, you know, I think that's fine. And uh, I agree with you. I think a passing game coordinator would be fine, whether that's Mike Sullivan if he stays or somebody else that Arthur Smith knows. I think that's probably, you know, something that's a good idea for this team after, um, you know, what's transpired here over the last uh, two or three years under Ken. One of the things that we've heard some people put out there is, you know, Arthur Smith having a connection to Mike Munchak in their in their history, and of course Munchak having a connection with the Steelers. That oh, Mike Munchak could be coming back to the Steelers, but I don't know if they're just necessarily throwing away Pat Meyer. I think that Pat Meyer's gotten some good things out of the offensive line. The offensive line hasn't been great, um, but I'm not so sure that they throw him away uh, right. for you know for a guy who that you know <coughs> yes, Mike Munchak has a great history, but. Um, you know, do, do you do you break up what you've been building yeah. uh, to go to go bring him back in? Yeah, that's the difficult thing because you know, Chris. I'm sure you've noticed you watch a lot of film, mm -hmm. and uh, you're in the locker room like I am. Um, there's been a lot of turnover on that offensive line the last couple of years. Yep. Um, they've had slow starts the last couple of years, and you know, no one's ever gone on record and said this, but I just get this through conversations I have with offensive linemen when they come here. You know, Pat kind of strips them down. He wants them to learn his techniques, and that how that's how he goes about his business. That's how he builds his line. So if you noticed, you know, Broderick Jones took a while to get going. Mm -hmm. But when he finally had it down Pat, he hit the ground running. Uh, I thought Isaac Sam Wally was better in the second half of the season than he was in the first half of the season. Um, and I think that was true with James Daniels. Um, and Mason Cole in that first year. So you saw that market improvement, September and October, not so good. November, December, January, much better in terms of the running game. So I think you also risk um, messing with the offensive line that you've that you've kind of built up over the last couple of years. You want to continue to build it. And then you, when you come in, maybe Mike Munchak teaches a different way. You know, I mean, that's just – so people – again, people – like to hear big names, former head coaches, but sometimes when you invest in a guy and you invest in uh, resources and linemen and, and you see that it's it's maybe coming together, maybe there's an unwillingness uh, you know, to change that as well. Absolutely. I want to talk more about what they can do for, to help with the passing game for the Steelers, especially at quarterback. We'll talk about that on the other side of this break here on the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato, stick with us. We'll be right back.
We're back here in the North Shore Drive podcast on the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Chris Carter, Ray Fittipato. Um, Ray, let's talk about the quarterback situation because there were some quarterbacks at the Senior Bowl as always. Um, but this wasn't the same kind of year where there was like, you know, like Justin Herbert was at the Senior Bowl one year and everyone stopped to see what he what he was doing. Um, but there weren't I didn't think there, there were the kind of like, you know, obvious first round standout guys that were there. You know, Spencer Rattler performed. You wrote about you wrote about him. Yeah. Uh, you know, Michael Penix was there. Granted, he was injured, um, you know, and everything. What did you what do you gain from? what you've seen out of this quarterback class that might be attainable for the Steelers. Do you think this is a year where maybe the Steelers find a way to get a young arm or another rookie in the, the quarterback room, even if that's not a person challenging for a starter right or starting position right away? Yeah. I mean, it depends on what happens with Mason and free agency, of course. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think we all agree that the des- decision on Trubisky, we think he's going to go, but we don't know that for certain. So we, you know, some things have to play out before I think we can really seriously talk about, if they're going to get a developmental quarterback, but if they are, um, you know, I think a guy like Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt of Tulane, who was also down there this week, um, you know, they, they, they were fine, um, but they weren't really guys that I would pick on the first two days of the draft. I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe those guys, you know, quarterbacks are pushed up draft boards, whether it's up into the first round, it's the same thing happens in the second or third round too. So maybe, you do have to go up and get that guy like in the third round, but I sort of view all those guys as, um, you know, fringe day two, day three types of picks. I, I didn't like Bo Nix down there. I mean, he just, he just wasn't very good. I watched him closely. Penix was okay, I guess, but yeah. not really impressive to me. Um, the other guys too. So, you know, after the top three, um, you know, the guys who are going to go in the top five, Drake May, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, um, to me, it's an average quarterback class, and if you're going to take a guy, you know, take him third round at the earliest, pre- preferably uh, the fourth round. And Chris, as you know, the Steelers have two fourth round picks back to back, one nineteen mm-hmm. and one twenty, based on mm-hmm. uh, a trade they had with the Rams a couple of years ago, or this past year maybe. Um, so you know, there are two fourth round picks. If you don't make a deal, you don't trade to go up or go down. Maybe, maybe you use one of those picks on a quarterback. That could be a, a spot to get your guy, and that way you you know you can get a, you know a, a quarterback that again you're not putting pressure that then this isn't anyone to put pressure on Kenny Pickett like you said that needs to be done by either bringing back Mason Rudolph and or adding another guy to the quarterback room. But I could see another young guy that you develop you know comes up on, on the system, and then maybe if things go south with Kenny Pickett and you know something else not working out, you can see hey maybe this is a young arm that develops that you could have on the roster for future seasons. But I want to ask you this: a lot of people want to know about going out and adding ex-veteran quarterback, whether it's Russell Wilson or Kirk Cousins or, you know, Baker Mayfield. Do you see that as a move the Steelers take right now? Because if you're getting one of those guys, you're probably paying a decent contract for most of them. Like I think Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield with the years that they had, um, you know, granted Kirk Cousins finished injured, but I feel like they might command a pretty penny. And this is a year where I think the Steelers still need to kind of, add around their roster in different key spots as well as, you know, finding the answer at quarterback. Yeah. I mean, there is that thing with Russell Wilson, how the the Broncos are on the hook for, Mm -hmm. I think the bulk of his salary. So I, you know, I suppose that's doable. I'm not really in that boat, to be honest with you. Um, You know, to me, what you do is let's say Mason Rudolph doesn't come back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say that for whatever reason, maybe the Steelers don't want him back or maybe he just, he wants to move on. Um, to me, like Ryan Tannehill would make perfect sense. Um, he played for Arthur Smith. He's older. He's not going to threaten Kenny Pickett, but he would be that veteran that if there is an injury to Kenny Pickett or if things go sour with Kenny Pickett, I mean, to me, would you have an issue handing it over to, to Ryan H- Tannehill for a second half of 2024? I mean, that guy's, you know, that guy's been good over the years. He's not, you know, he's not a top flight player anymore. He's not top half the league anymore, but, you know, 2019, 2020, he certainly was. He was taken to the playoffs, and they were having success in the playoffs. So to me, he knows Arthur Smith's system. I think he's at the point of it in his career that he knows that he's going to have to be a backup. Um, so as long as he would be okay with that, I think he would be a perfect fit for the Steelers. Um, but other than that, I'd be happy to have Mason back too. I think Mason um, acquitted himself quite well, quite well if he wants to come back. I think he'd be a fine backup or a guy to challenge Kenny. So 
Um, you know, th that's what I'm thinking on the backup. You know, the, the, the big names showing out $35, $40 million a year to a 37-year-old coming off an Achilles injury, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. No, I agree. It doesn't. Um, and, and I think it's also – uh, it's also an interesting question here because like, I think you put it like, you know, with uh, with bringing in Ryan Tannehill, he necessarily wouldn't be a challenge to take the starting position from Kenny Pickett. But some people might feel maybe that bring in somebody that challenges Kenny Pickett because I, I feel like Kenny Pickett's in a position where, listen, like this team's going to absolutely give you another chance, but you got to come correct. And you can't be afraid of this team adding any talent to this to the quarterback room. And you need to come in and prove that, hey, this is my spot. This is my yeah. team. And I'm going to be that guy here. Should the Steelers try to look for somebody who could challenge Kenny Pickett in this offseason? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and listen, I, the way that things unfolded for Kenny this year, and I know the injury was a part of it. But deep down, I don't care if you're a guy drafted in the first round or not. Deep down, you have to know what you've done the last two years hasn't been good enough. I mean, sometimes right. sometimes it's, the stats do tell the story. I mean, the, the touchdowns, um, you know, just the lack of explosiveness within the offense. I think, you know, he should want to be challenged. I mean, Mike Tomlin came out and said this is a make or break year for him. So to me, it doesn't matter who's who's behind you. It's, it's either do or die. You come in, you ball out, and you do great, or you're going to be on the bench uh, by October 1st or November 1st. That's, that's the way I look at it. So to me, it almost doesn't matter who the backup is. Kenny's going to perform or he's not. And uh, if he doesn't, I think they have to have and they will have somebody in place um, to take over for him. I'm right with you. I think that that's what that they're probably going to do something along those lines. Because again, I think Kenny Pickett should feel pressure to prove himself. And like you said, he he needs he. I think he does know he hasn't played up to the level that's expected yeah. of him. Um, you know, and he might be legitimately frustrated with how you know how how things have been, and and you know he just you know injuries as far as his his expectations. You know how the team has played as a, as a whole in, in some situations, but there should be no escaping the fact that like look he has not done the, enough of a job to prove that he's the franchise quarterback or starting quarterback in the NFL period right now. I, he needs to know that like, Hey, this is the prove it year. And I, I still think there's a potential for him to fix, to fix it and to come out and, and show that. But I think that in an, in an offense, the way that Arthur Smith is, we've seen his offense run. This is a good opportunity for him to just be like, Hey, I need to learn everything in this offense so I can be instinctual. I can be reading the field because to me, if Kenny Pickett simply solves the reading the field problem and getting the ball to the open man in the right time and the way the plays are designed, that is the key that makes him a serviceable, good to good quarterback. And then with the with the way the Steelers, I think, want to run their offense, running the ball, letting their playmakers do, do most of the work. That's what you want to see to make this unit go kind of a lot like how Mason Rudolph was doing yeah. at the end of the season. And if he can get to that level, I think that's the progress you need to see from it. Yeah. Mason made all the right reads, or most of them. You know, I thought Mason played above average when he got the chance. Now, Mason probably has a stronger arm than Kenny, probably throws a better deep ball than Kenny. But, you know, Kenny has some some assets to his game that, that Mason doesn't have. If he can ever figure out how to use his athleticism in the pocket, you know, rather than the, the way he's using it now, you know, that could be something that the Steelers use to their advantage. So, uh, to me, there's give and take with those guys. Um, but I think you're right. You know, I think Mason came in, did the simple things, um, did them right, and he put the Steelers in a position and win, and they got into the playoffs. And I think Kenny Pickett, when he gets the reins again, he's got to do a better job in that regard. I agree. He has to do a better job in that regard. I think that this – that's um that's something that that needs to that that needs to be proven here. We'll see if he does prove it throughout time. They have plenty of time to decide that. We also have a lot to look forward to as far as do the Steelers add to the coaching staff? Do they, what, what are they doing in free agency? And what are going to be the big talking points going into the combine? We'll keep you up to date with that here and more on the North Shore Drive podcast and at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Read all of Ray's work along with Jerry Dulac and Brian Batko at post-gazette.com. I'm your host Chris Carter. Find all these shows Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here on the Pittsburgh Post Gazette's podcasting channel on your favorite podcast podcasting app and on youtube like this video if you enjoy it subscribe to the channel for those episodes as well as our daily content that comes out from all of our writers here at the pittsburgh post gazette back wednesday with more here on the north shore drive podcast thank you for tuning in to another episode of the north shore drive podcast from the pittsburgh post gazette if you watch this video on youtube please like the video and subscribe to our channel for all the sports coverage from the post gazette that we have to offer visit post-gazette.com 